Vanderbilt University is facing backlash this morning for a quiz asking students this question, quote, was the Constitution designed to perpetuate white supremacy and protect the institution of slavery? One student in the class telling the Federalist he was penalized for not agreeing with the statement, although the university claims that's not the case. Here to react is Black Voices for Trump advisory board member and former Vanderbilt professor, Dr. Carol Swain. Dr. Swain, this is your, um, at least on a modern terms of teaching, what is your reaction to this story about whether or not the Constitution was founded on uh, the protection of white supremacy? Well, we know that the true answer is false. And I'm not surprised that a question like that might appear on a university quiz because today the political left, they walk in lockstep and the 1619 narrative, the New York Times project, that seems to be driving the dialogue today. Vanderbilt University, by the way, said the following in response to this controversy. The question was posed to stimulate discussion. Students were, in fact, not rewarded or penalized for their answers. It was unfortunate the intent behind the purpose of the academic exercise has been misconstrued. Still, doctor, this is an issue not just at Vanderbilt, but across higher education and perhaps lower education as well. I want to ask you about this story from USC where a professor in a language course at the business school was talking about Chinese filler words, the equivalent of ums, you know, how we use them as filler words in English. And the Chinese filler word sounded like a racial slur in English. For that, he has been placed on leave because some students were purportedly offended. What is your reaction? Well, students are always offended about something, and what has happened in this culture of political correctness is that anyone at any time can uh, claim to be offended, and the professor bears the burden of that. And even if you're a tenured professor, you are not protected, and what it means is that students can no longer be educated because there's no way you can educate students when you can't teach your subject matter because someone in the classroom might be offended and they might complain. And what they have given at many universities because of the multiculturalism, diversity, inclusion, equity, they have given minority students a veto power over everything a professor does. And it means that no education, no real education has taken place at most institutions. And it's not just uh, the colleges and universities, it's also K through 12 now. And it's all part of this critical theory. It's destroying American education just like it's destroying other institutions. I want to get to that theory in just a moment, the one you mentioned, critical race theory. But first, I have to ask you this. Do you believe this is truly driven out of students who are offended, or is this a power grab, something you designed and used to take down a professor or a history book or whatever it may be, whatever the target may be? I think we've been training our students for a long time to be offended about everything. Uh, the whole concept of a microaggression is a perceived uh, slight. And so universities have had professors uh, uh, have asked them to give trigger warnings before they teach any subject that might offend someone and what offends a person today. Uh, the, the rules change constantly. There's mm -hmm. no way that you can teach or operate in an environment where the rules change daily. And again, this was a word in Chinese that sounded like an English language racial slur. USC, by the way, put out a statement. They said the following. A USC faculty member during a class used a Chinese word that sounds similar to a racial slur in English. We acknowledge the historical, cultural, and harmful impact of racist language. The faculty member agreed to take a short-term pause while another professor teaches that one course, but he continues to teach his others. We are reviewing to better understand the situation and take any appropriate steps. Let us return now, uh, Professor Swain, to what you mentioned, critical race theory. Just last night, the White House said federal agencies who teach critical race theories, what they call divisive racial sensitivity training, will no longer receive funding. They're putting an end to any types of these programs within federal government. What are your thoughts on that? I would say praise the Lord because I think the diversity, equity, inclusion training does the opposite of what it says it will do. It is divisiveness training, and what I believe America needs is unity training, and it's something that I will be speaking and writing more about, but corporations 
and schools, they need people that respect everyone's rights, that are going to bring everyone together and focus on the goals of the institution. We do not need divisiveness training. We need unity training. We need teams to come together. And what's taking place today comes out of critical race theory and critical theory. It's Marxist. It is destroying America and its institutions. I hope you do write more about it. Critical race theory is something that not many people understand or know much about, and yet it's the underpinning of so much of this going on in not just government, but corporate America and higher education as well. And churches. Churches as well. All right, Dr. Carol Swain, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.